Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 27th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The DA today is talking about a new trick that he found used in Excel 4 macros, something that DA has been writing in the past about. Now, Excel 4, of course, no longer an active uh, version of Excel, but these Excel 4 macros will still be parsed fine by current versions of Excel. And one property that's often used by Malware is the visibility feature field in Excel spreadsheets. So each sheet has its own visibility and this can be either visible, hidden or very hidden, taking up two bits in a byte that's otherwise not defined. So very hidden would mean that the bit value two is set, hidden bit value one and visible, well, uh, the value is zero. The other bits are ignored and that's of course a great opportunity for malware writers to evade signatures. If particular anti-malware is just looking for these predefined visibility values, then they may not identify a sheet as very hidden and the signature may fail. While Excel, of course, will just ignore the other bits and open that macro just fine. And if you're using an HP printer and a Mac, you may have had some problems these last couple days with the HP printer applications refusing to launch. Apparently the problem here was that one of the signing certificates being used by HP had been revoked. And as a result, of course, the operating system did no longer allow that software to run. Of course, the entire certificate revocation ecosystem is kind of messy. Also the same for Mac OS. It didn't affect all versions of Mac OS. Apparently older versions of Mac OS do no longer update the database of revoked certificates and they did not learn of this revoked certificates. Now, since then, the certificate has been unrevoked again and things should work fine. But of course, there's always a chance that, well, uh, your system didn't get the message and HP asks that you are contacting support if you are affected by this. And yes, manipulating the certificate databases is typically not encouraged uh, because it's very easy to make things worse if you do so. Why that certificate was revoked is not really clear. Uh, there are some reports that HP initiated the revocation, but uh, then I guess uh, realized it was a mistake. And it shouldn't be a surprise that if you are getting a preview of a particular web page as part of a message sent to you via a private messaging service, that information may leak. Now, how much is leaking and how this exactly all works, there is now a Pretty neat piece of research uh, by Talal Bakri and Tommy Misk, who summarized how different messaging services are generating these previews. Turns out that uh, some of them do generate them on the sender's system, and then they're being forwarded to the receiver with no data being sent from the receiver to the website that's being previewed. That seems to be actually sort of a little bit the best approach here. Others leave it up to the recipient then to download a copy of the respective website in order to generate the preview. And then there's also the approach where they are leaving it up to the messaging service to actually download and generate this preview. The other thing that sort of changes between different messengers is how much data is being downloaded. And of course that could potentially be used to fingerprint uh, which messenger is being used. And uh, some of them are pretty excessive in how much data they will potentially uh, download from the server in order to preview a particular website. 
Some interesting issues that they found is, for example, the line messenger, which is something I'm not really familiar with, but apparently they're using their own server, so the messaging uh, server, in order to download the information for the previews, which seems to prevent uh, any kind of leak of data from either sender or recipient to uh, the particular website. But uh, it turns out that they apparently are forwarding the IP addresses of both the sender and recipient as part of uh, that preview process. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And last week, actually, I just finished teaching our Defending Web Application Security class, SEC 522. I'll be teaching it again at our CDI conference, which of course, as anything we are doing these days is completely online. So uh, take a look at tons of interesting classes that will be taught in December. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.